a kid told me he was like talking about a bathroom experience and he's like yeah so I'm gonna stand up and wipe and like we were like what? apparently it's like a fair amount of people do it okay really mm -hmm. don't know what we're gonna do with that in here but thank you It's not an interview without a cup of coffee. I don't have, I don't right. like coffee. We realized uh, after putting the vlog out last week, and appreciate everybody coming to that, that we uh, did so, and nobody really knows who we are other than some of those viewers out of Newcastle. So with that, we thought we'd introduce ourselves here as we hope to do, you know, a vlog about every race weekend, maybe some others in between. So. With that, let's introduce the stars of the show, the, the two primary drivers for stall racing. Guys, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Ben, and I, I'm going to be running the CIK and senior class out of Newcastle, and I'll be in number 26. I'm Casey. Uh, I'm also going to be racing the LO206, probably just in CIK. Number 14. So, as we head out to Newcastle this year, it'll be our third full season. Had a, a few races the, the year before that. What do you, uh, what would you say is your most exciting moment, uh, most uh, memorable moment out at the track? I was able to win pole, and um, just in that field, that class of drivers, it was, it's really a sweet moment. I can say I was more stoked, I think, than you were, for that, that pole. I, uh, uh, that was awesome. Yep. Uh, I, it was, I was more excited for you winning the pole than if I would have won the pole. The highlight of last year for me was in the last race, uh, I qualified third, I was running second at one point, and uh, I ended up finishing fourth in a, in a very close four cart pack, um, very exciting, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about what the high point uh, has been, uh, the exciting moments. What what would you say has been your low point out at the track? My low light, I, I had a few of them where I took myself out, uh, just pushing too hard. You put a wheel off track and or uh, you know lock up the brakes and and around you go. biggest low light I have was the same day I won pole was the second lap of the race and I spun out and went to the back of the field and just had to kind of drive the rest of the race you know the next 10 laps knowing Victor wasn't in the cards today and that was a really tough pill to swallow out there. have a particular part of the weekend that you would say without a doubt is your favorite part? I like Saturday afternoon. Kind of the, um, assuming there's a lot of people out there practicing the day before the race, I like it because you kind of, you've had a whole practice day and you're getting to the last few sessions and so that's whenever you're kind of racing with guys and stacking up and, but there's, there's no pressure. There's, you don't have that I have to, you know, go out there and beat this person or go out there and run this time. You just kind of go out there and see, see what you've got compared to these guys because, you know, worse comes worse if you're a second off the pace or whatever. you got tomorrow to figure it out and practice some qualifications in the morning before the race, but uh, you're still racing with those same guys and putting in, you know, a race uh, um, a race time uh, in terms of how long the session is. You're, you're racing for as long as a race would be, so I always like that. You kind of have a race feel without having the pressure of, you know, 
finishing well? Uh, what was the question? I guess I dropped. I forget. It went on so long. I don't know. <laughs> it was. Uh, oh, what, the favorite what, moment. What do you want? What do you uh, want? The favorite from me? moment of the weekend. I don't know, Ben. But all I know is we get you on camera and you talk for like twenty minutes and answer. You come home from How college. How is that different than normal? Mom life? and dad are glad to see you. How was your week, Ben? Fine. You know we get one word answers. Maybe Usually you we put me on can't camera pull then. words out of you. And today, it's like watching Charlie Brown. Okay, favorite favorite part of the weekend. Well, my favorite part of the no. weekend. <laughs> um, it, for me, my favorite part is stacking up there right before the race as you're going down the straightaway to take the green flag. Uh, I, I just love that feeling. Just the adrenaline, and you're so focused. Yeah, this is what the whole weekend's been about. So that's that's my favorite part. Why exactly did you guys choose the cart numbers? You did the the fourteen, the thirty four, and I'll talk about the twenty six after. Uh, I chose fourteen because my wife's birthday is on March fourteenth, so that's where the fourteen comes from. And I wanted to show Sarah a little bit of my appreciation for all of her support in this money pit of a hobby I have. I chose thirty four. It's always uh, seems like it's always been the number I've chosen. Uh, as a kid, I was a Walter Payton fan, and uh, Sunday afternoons were dominated by Walter Payton. And so, uh, throughout school, I uh, would wear the number 34 when I was playing basketball or any sport. And that's really where it came from. The reason I chose number 26 was because Casey and I's grandparents are the only reason we were able to get in the sport. And our grandfather's birthday is February 6th, so I thought just kind of same way Casey chose 14, just a nice little tribute to Grandpa um, by putting the 26 on um, every Sunday. Uh, anything else that you guys would want to say about the track? Uh, anything about the weekend? Any any free thoughts about Newcastle? We're going to get into some personal stuff here. <coughs> Quick. What's the question? About Just Newcastle? Any, yeah, personal thoughts about the race. Between. You guys appreciate the challenge that I have. I'm with it. Um, I'm pouring out stuff here. I mean, Tom Brokaw never did this better. And this is what I have to deal with. Who? What was your question? Uh, attention span is not your strength, I would take. Me? So, either one of you. Well, no, <laughs> Where's you my time? You have rambled on plenty. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> but you have been critical of my question. Well, the question started out one way and ended yeah. another. Yeah. Well, Tom uh, broken all or whatever. I, mean, I feel like he probably knows his his questions and what he's asking. Well, Tom broke off probably gets Prom a little of the respect he deserves, right? Favorite musical act? Cats. Like a play? <laughs> what is his favorite mean? band? Is Fa that favorite musical act? Well, okay. Let's say you don't like band. Let's say you like opera. Let's say you so like artists. the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Yeah. Musician? See, that's, you know, that's Go something... ahead and rephrase the question. Yeah. What's your favorite musician slash band? What do you guys listen to on your iPod? I know you don't have iPods. Okay. What do you guys listen to music-wise? Uh, I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty similar. He's a little bit more into it than me. Like, more hardcore is what you'd say. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've heard it, but it's it just heavy. I he like was heavy in a music. band in high school. So, growing up being his younger brother, I never really had a chance. I was always around it. Um, I like like alternative and punk type stuff. Uh, like, for example, bands, popular bands that you probably know, like Blink-182, Fall Out Boy before they turned pop, and um, I don't know, like a bunch of those just like early 2000s kind of alternative bands, stuff like that it was kind of like what I listened to as a kid, and then so you just kind of get in the same stuff, only it's not nearly as popular now. Um, but again, manager for the women's team, so I listen to a fair amount of rap, and it's catching on a little bit, just because that's all the girls listen to. Casey, did you get a chance to answer? Yeah, yeah no, I started. <laughs> I, I started, I started to answer. Uh, <laughs> but I listen to a lot of underground. Uh, it's hard to describe, but it's heavy, a lot of screaming. Most people, well, yeah, similar. That was a little better than most of it. I can tell you I'm always glad to get to the classic rock track at NCMP after listening to the stuff they want to listen to on the drive over. Okay, let's uh, let's see how short this answer can be. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? 
<laughs> the, thing, the bad thing is, is I was thinking of, of, I was like, well, the easy answer is cookie dough, but like, I don't really feel like cookie dough right now. Cookie dough. Keep it short. Strawberry. Okay. I didn't know that. Now you do. Yeah. Look at this. Enlightening video. Hypothetical question. You're in a 20 by 20 room. <laughs> of, All course you this have is, of course this question is coming up. This is a polarizing up. question. Is, a bear, is your bare hands to get out of that room. I don't even want to answer it. You can only come out if you live through a battle. You get to choose your foe. An alligator, an anaconda, or a black mamba. Which do you choose to fight with your bare hands? I choose to fight the anaconda, hands down. The It's the only chance I have to survive. I can't true. take on an alligator. I can't take on a black mamba. I'm not saying I could survive the anaconda, but it's my best chance. Just for you guys at home, this question's been around for like two oh, yeah. years. It's very and there's polarizing. There's been plenty of arguments over it. Black mamba, you can't really take because they're, they're quick and one bite you're dead. You know, you'd have to do some work. Um, Wait for it. The alligator is the obvious answer. Okay? Anaconda is nothing but muscle. It would take, like, full grown, right? We're talking full grown of all these things. Like, they're. Yeah, they're full okay. grown. Yeah, no, an anaconda is going to take up probably three fourths of that room, first of all. A 30 foot snake that's all muscle, it's going to absolutely kill you. I get, like, you could bash its head. No, even after those things are dead, they still twirl, and, like, the muscles contract, and they can still kill you after they die. Yeah. Alligators have no endurance whatsoever, okay? Yeah, in a 20-foot room, you don't need endurance. You... I'm not expecting to be Ace Ventura taking it on in a, in a river, but in a where there's no water in a room like that? Those, that thing will be tired out after five minutes, and then I'm just beating the crap out of its head. Yeah, I don't know. This has been logic after here. After the alligator at, bites at your finest. arm off, and there you are stuck in the room fighting with one arm, that's not going to be fun. Oh, first of all, no, I've watched more Discovery Channel than either of you guys. Like, more about these animals. Cause I love, that's like, Planet Earth. Like, all, no, no, no. Uh, check it's, that not, box, it's not. It's not. But the thing, is, the thing is, you guys, that settles it. You guys <laughs> act like... I, my, my whole point is, I know more about those three animals than you guys. <laughs> I'm no expert by any means, okay? Maybe somebody watching by chance is, but I know more than you guys, and it's just so funny to sit here and think, oh, well, an anaconda. That's what we run into at Stall Racing. It doesn't matter what the subject is. Ben knows more than we do. Right. Dad, what three items could you buy that would make the cashier the most uncomfortable? I don't know, bomb components maybe? Yeah, we're gonna skip this one. I can already see that one if you approve because you're gonna go sexual or, or terrorist. Well, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dad, what's the best type of cheese? Best type of cheese? Melted. <laughs> ben, best type of cheese? American. Oh my gosh, that's not, that's a cheese product. That's it's, not even cheese. But it's the United it's, States of America. No, it's a terrible name for cheese. It should not be I under the American, American cheese name. Pretty much everything. No. Ben. Or cottage cheese. That's good too. Ben, how many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? <laughs> uh, male or female? Male. Ah, <laughs> uh, full size elephant, full size chickens. I'm assuming. Yeah, that's a safe assumption. Do they? Are they trying to fight? Ben, how 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 much do you want to dissect this question? I'm just trying to get the facts because I don't want to look stupid on camera. Are the okay. elephants covered in corn? <laughs> Dad, is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> no, a hot dog is a hot dog. But but Ben, same question. Hot. Well, yeah, I I would agree with that. But as I'm thinking about it, a bun, a hot dog bun, and then a hamburger bun. They both go on buns. Who's right. to say? Yeah, I mean, if uh, when I think of sandwich, I think of meat in between two slices of bread. Is a pig in a blanket a sandwich? Uh, I'm asking the questions here, Ben. <laughs> okay. just, just, you can see the confusion in Casey's face. <laughs> oh, no. Wow, yeah, really that's... Yeah. That. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'd just like to say, you know, if you have any other questions you'd like to get to know us by, feel free to comment, ask. Uh, I do have a special request. If you're watching this video, please comment below what you think about the anaconda alligator black mama thing maybe i am crazy or maybe i'm dead on the money let us know please um regardless we'll see you guys out there and hopefully the season's gonna be a great one